Everybody's looking for a hero. We're all in despair. Or a savior sometimes even. There you go. If you look at biblical times, then in Revelation it says, persuasive words, elicit sympathy and goodwill from others. Hey, hey. (laughs) (laughs) Ginger. So it may be especially applicable to those who hold some of the highest positions in corporate organizations, who influence corporate culture and at times are considered visionaries in their respective industries. Let's talk about white-collar offending, then. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Professor, Professor Schippers, may I ask you some questions? Yes, of course. What do you want to know, Rico? We live in an interesting time, in a complicated time. Where people spring up and you think, oh, he's got a, or she's got a good story. That would be something, someone uh, you would listen to or I would try to talk to as a journalist. How do you differentiate between who, who's sincere, who's got a true story, or who's a false prophet? And that's what we're going to talk about, false prophets. Yes, Michaela. exactly, exactly. Yeah, I thought about this issue because... Um, I hear a lot of people these days that say, hey, I've spent so much energy and time in in an organization that says they they want to make the world a better place. And I spent 11 hours a day uh, for free for them, working for them. And then they find out that their contribution is not valued. And sometimes it turns out that this organization is a kind of a, yeah, let's say false prophet, false flag, uh, whatever you want to call it. So um, I was thinking of... um, that in difficult times, many people spring up and say, hey, we are going to make a difference. We are going to uh, do th- make things better. And these are very hard to distinguish from the real, let's say, prophets. And what are real prophets? And what is, a, what is a false prophet? That's a really good question. So I was thinking of the story of the Pied Piper of uh, 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 Hamelin. <laughs> Um, so for Dutch, the Rattenfanger van Hamelin. Rattenfanger van Hamelin, yeah. It's, it's a, a German... Uh, um, story it's um, the brothers Grimm uh, uh, came with it and um, it's also called the pen piper or the red catcher of Hamelin so the le- legend dates back to the middle ages and the idea was uh, Hamelin was a city in uh, Germany that was infested with uh, rats and then the mayor asked the um, this colored piper he had all these colored uh, uh, clothing can you please help us get and he said yeah we, I can I have this magic flute and I can uh, take them with me and then uh, they will disappear. So um, what happened? He did that, uh, in, at least uh, according to the story. He, he uh, used his flute and then everybody, uh, the, the rats were following. Uh, but then, and never to be seen again. And then, so that worked? And it worked. <laughs> and then the, the mayor refused to pay him. Or uh, in some versions it said he had to pay a thousand guilders and then uh, the mayor only paid him fifty. Uh, yeah, the, the piper was of course very angry, so he decided to lure uh, 130 children out of the town and they were never seen again. So that's kind of the... And it's become, um, yeah, how do you say, synonymous for Satan, but also for a false prophet sometimes. Um, somebody who says, uh, uh, who's going to say, I have a great solution and try to yeah, so why help people, are you but in the end they don't. Why? I can imagine the, you bring this topic up and uh, researching this, mm-hmm. and you want to talk and share on, on Follow the Science about false prophets. Mm-hmm. What in, in current affairs, what in this day and age makes you refer to this story as an example? I think in times of trouble, and if you look at the last three years, we have crisis, crisis, and crisis. And then um, there's people that really want to make a change, and they have usually a bit, a bit of a nuanced view, and you don't really see them, or it's not about them, about their ego. Um, and then there are people who are really saying, hey, I have a great story, and I can have the solution of the, to the problem. And these people are usually the ones with a big ego and um, promise a lot of things, but are the wrong uh, false prophets. If you look at, in, in biblical times, then uh, it's also referred uh, to false prophets, but also in the end times, uh, in, in Revelation, it says, um, it's the second beast even, uh, together with Antichrist and Satan. Um, it's a third party in an unholy trinity, but it looks like a lamb. 
and uh, persuasive words. The bad guy looks like a lamb. Exactly. Like, like the, the cat that was on our lap a moment ago. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he looks nice, but in the evening he always uh, bites me. <laughs> so he uh, persuasive words, uh, elicit sympathy and goodwill from others. So people follow this person because it looks like, you know, a, sheep in, uh, a wolf in sheep, sheep's clothing. And you think, hey, this, this one, I want to follow this person. And, and, but ac actually the idea of, or the mission of this person is that he or she is the big person and, and wants, wants, has a double agenda, wants a lot of things. Um, so, so how do you recognize them? How do you see the difference? It's very, very difficult. How do you differentiate, uh, differentiate between someone who has good intentions or one that looks the same but happens to be the wolf in sheep's clothing? Exactly, okay. exactly. So um, I think um, sometimes you feel, okay, it, it feels off. First, it starts with a feeling, something's wrong, it doesn't feel right. Um, I've heard people who had spent this 11 hours a day for this person uh, for a couple of years, and then they say, hey, I'm sorry, but now this is the, 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 this is the limit, I'm going to stop. Never, they never hear from this person again. So that is, a <laughs> that is learning through... Um, Let's say in a difficult way, uh, in the hard way, learning the hard way that you have been serving the wrong person. But a person, I, I would say, who is a, a lead, uh, takes the lead in, in making the world a better place, it shouldn't be about this person, it should be about the cause. Um, and if it seems to be more about the person than about the cause, then something is wrong. Um, what you also see is the rise to fame is really fast, sometimes almost overnight. So what you're listening is... Yes, symptoms, it's, triggers, it's, which, which, yes, what, yes. Which, which put you on alert, say, oh, well, let's see if this is genuine or not. Yes. Okay. If, if, if I see a person that, that is there overnight and before that I've never heard of this person, then I'm going to look, okay, who is this person? And it's, it is possible, you know, if you train uh, for, the, for the championships for, I don't know, for 10 years and then all of a sudden you will win the championships. But if you've never trained before and then you win the world championships, that is impossible. <laughs> All right, so let's let's reflect on current affairs and people watching this in, in English abroad may not know this, but we've just had our elections in the Netherlands and all of a sudden, bang, out of nowhere, a new party wins everywhere in the exactly, municipal exactly. elections. Yeah, so to me it's a red flag, but it is a red flag. It doesn't mean I'm right. I'm, I'm So everybody has to decide for themselves. But for, to me, I'm, I'm thinking, hey, is this... Another example, going back to the Pied Piper, who lured 130 children out of town. We've misplaced uh, uh, many children in the Netherlands uh, over the last 10 years in, 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 in getting them out of their houses, out of their families, uh, because of faulty tax collection schemes in the Netherlands. I don't know how to translate it properly, but uh, over a thousand children have gone missing in the Netherlands. 1100, I think, yeah. Um, um, yeah that's, red flag. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a big red flag for the government, because a government who takes away children from families uh, in such quantities that is... And they're uh, gone, they're lost, we don't know where they are. That's, yeah, I, um, <laughs> I don't okay. know what to say about that, but that's a red flag about the government at least. Um, so they promise a new system, a better system, but basically they're creating or recreating the same system. Um, so basically in, in, uh, there's a saying, here comes the new boss, it's the same as the old boss. So that is, uh, that is a red flag. And yeah, as I said, it feels like something's off. So do a background on this person. Who is this person? Um, can you openly discuss your doubts within the organization? Or are they silenced? Because if I am being silenced <laughs> within an organization, that's a big red flag. Um, or is it every concern that you say is being waived? Um, are you valued as a person within the organization? Because if you are recreating a system where you say, "Hey, it's about people," it's re I want to re so then everybody in the in the organization should be val valued. And so um, the that is how you can recognize them. And one red flag is maybe not you know saying everything, but if I see three or four or five, then I think that hmm. would put you on alert. Exactly. Okay. So what can you do? Yeah, learn from experience that, uh, and and maybe learn not not do it again then, um, become wise through harm and disgrace, but to uh, make sure it doesn't happen to begin with, uh, you can follow your heart instead of a person. So um, think about um, 
what you want in life, what is important to you. Don't eat my necklace, please. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had these conversations before in your house. We're in your house. Yeah. Uh, I, I was making the point. Well, maybe you should have the cats. Cats work on the internet. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so she's on your lap. So <laughs> <laughs> eating my necklace. <laughs> <laughs> but this it's nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, make sure to create your own vision. So I, I uh, have a tool for that and I created a tool for that and form a network of people with a similar vision. And it should be a network. It shouldn't be one person telling everybody else what to do. Because how can one person decide for everyone else what to do? So that is my idea. And I created, as you know, the letter to the future where people can think about their ideal world uh, if there were no constraints versus the world that will come to pass if we go on like this and what everybody can contribute. So you can find that online, but you can also make a film out of this or you can draw it or because I've had people who said, ah, I don't like this writing part and I would like to do something else or, you know, you don't need me to tell you what to do. So um, no one has to do it, but it can help. It's a tool. It's just like a medicine, it can help you get better or it can <laughs> make you more sick. So we'll link that under this conversation also, let us to the future. Yes. Now this talk is about false prophets mm -hmm. and one of the red flags would be people that spring up out of nowhere and go, I'm, I'm a leader. Yeah. Now to make a real life example, I've been doing this journalism that I, in, in my style since 2018, mm -hmm. which has not attracted a large audience. I'm not the guy that says, follow me, follow me. Mm -hmm. With as a result that not too many people do. <laughs> what would be your recommendation for a, s a small journalist like me then? Keep uh, doing what you're doing because the thing is that people need to recognize themselves uh, and find out the pearls, you know, um, the, these little clumps of gold. People have to start looking for them. Nuggets. I think. Nuggets of gold, yeah. sorry. The lump is bigger, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Thank you. All right. It's a good compliment, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I think, um, uh, and there's also, yeah, I don't know how to how to do that and how to, the, the thing is also with uh, products that are really good, uh, they don't sell themselves, but I, I'm not really good at that either, so don't ask advice from me then, because I'm not good at that. <laughs> so the core of this conversation is how can you spot people that, that you, everybody's looking for a hero, we're all in, in despair. Or a savior sometimes a savior. even, yeah. There you go. We have a panic cycle on panic cycle on panic cycle. We're in a war, we've had a, a virus, uh, we have inflation, banks are falling. <laughs> we, we need people that, 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 that tell us it's okay and that they're going to lead. Mm -hmm. So here, here are some suggestions in how you may, may spot the, the, the faulty ones. So mm -hmm. that's what you want to give people? Yeah. Or is it a call to action? You can stand up. <laughs> it's also a call to action because you have to create your own vision and then find other people who uh, align with your vision. And uh, of course, uh, somebody can come, come up with a very nice and uh, appealing vision, but then make sure that if you put in time and energy that you, it's not only the vision that you, uh, but also the person that you align with. So we've had false prophets, mm -hmm. in my words, in the Netherlands also, mm -hmm. and, but, but the people following them are genuine. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they yes. themselves may yes. be genuine. Yes. You you can't so. you can't point them out and say, well, that's false. Just leave them or pick a fight or how how should we deal with that then? No, people have to find out themselves because it's really hard. Also, um, I've been also a little bit surprised that a lot of people are called controlled opposition, for instance. But there it doesn't go. need to. It doesn't need to be a, a controlled opposition. It can just be an ego or somebody high on narcissism who um, does want to start out with a good view. I think a lot of organizations, like even Christianity, has started out from a very nice a visionary leader, uh, let's say Jesus in this, in this case, and he was even making people better, and at least uh, according to the Bible. And then Christianity had all these bad sides because a lot of people with a big ego started to take leading, leadership roles. But uh, servant leadership is really important. Look for servant leadership. People who say, I'm not important. The people I, I work uh, with are important. These are the mo most important people. It shouldn't be about me and my ego and my um, uh, words. Everybody should have a say in how, how the organization is run, uh, what we are going to do, where we are heading. Otherwise, there's one person pointing, okay, let's go that way. Everybody is following and then 
in the end you, you all fall off the cliff or something. So how did the story of the Pied Piper end? Do you remember? <laughs> no, I did don't the think so. Did children come back or no? No, no, no. Uh, well, there's different stories. Different ver varieties. Yeah, there's yeah, different yeah, versions okay. of the stories. But uh, in the original version, I think the children never came back. Thanks for this uh, hopeful conversation, Michelle. <laughs> did, you, did you say everything you wanted to say in this talk? Uh, yeah, I think okay, so. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>